how to improve the overall comfort of your work and how to squeeze 200% out of any piece of equipment. Tilta Advanced Ring Grip and DIY Gimbal Support. The basic question is who actually need it, when and why. Probably many of you are wondering why you should transform the RS2 into a two-handed large gimbal when in fact small size is the major value and a big step in the evolution of the gimbal. So from a certain point of view it doesn't make sense at all. Of course, it all depends on the specifics of your particular project. If for some reason your work requires some extra gear such as a microphone, monitor or maybe even an extra light, then I would definitely suggest using a two-handed rig. It may be a totally DIY version or a combination of dual handle or something like that, but what is important, you hold the Ronin more securely than with one hand, besides you have better control over it because you hold it much more stable. Another big benefit is that it's more versatile because you can use it in many creative ways. In my first video ever, I made a similar ring grip myself, much cheaper and using only some carbon or aluminum tubes and clamps. And honestly, to everyone with a small budget, I highly recommend it. However, if you just want to buy the ready-made product, you can choose Advanced Ring Grip from Tilta. What I like most about it and what makes it better than my version in some ways, the whole thing is extremely lightweight and functional. This is a truly complete product, excellent design. In the advanced version you have a right and left handle. You can mount them in any configuration depending on your preferences. On the first one you have a joystick to control the running, control buttons and front dial. And on the second one you have two focus wheels, so you can use the nano focus as an iris or zoom control. What's genius about this, you can use each handle apart from the ring grip because it can also be powered by batteries. This gives you a wireless focus model and wireless joystick that you can use in dozens of possible ways. The next great thing is the power adapter. You can mount it in four places and you have USB and PTA power output. From the top and side you will find several mounting options, so you can not only power but also mount a light monitor or smartphone on it. No more power banks and a bunch of batteries. It is a very clean setup. What is for sure important to mention is that from the power output you can of course power the camera. I think all Blackmagic camera users will be super excited about it. Another thing that is brilliant in my opinion is that the original Ronin battery works not only as a power supply but also as a top handle. With this kit, which is a Pocket 4K, Ronin RS2, small HD monitor, the battery life is about 2 hours. You can also buy a V-mount or gold mount adapter and then you can power everything with an extra large and powerful battery that will give you a few more hours of battery life. But there are always two sides of a coin and this kind of modification and extra equipment works both ways and there are some downsides such as size, overall dimensions and most important problem weight. So if you want to use professional tools you have to be prepared for this. For example, my Ronin with some extras and advanced grip is about 9 kilograms. I guess I don't have to explain how extremely difficult it is to get good shots with such a heavy weight on straight hands. That's why I would like to show you how it works if you would like to use some kind of support system. Here you have several options to choose from, but in fact these are expensive piece of equipment. That's why I want to show you how to do it yourself for less than $500. The whole design is quite simple and it is made up of only available thing. You don't need to fabricate or create anything, you just buy it and put it all together. In fact, apart from the carbon tubes, you can buy all the parts in one place. The cost of the entire adapter is approximately 150, I will leave links to all components in the description below. To make such a support, we obviously need a belt or a vest, which is our base and starting point. The first option is Tilta Float, I already mentioned it in my episode about it. For me it is a great solution, because Tilta Belt is perfect for all kinds of modification and now I have two types of support in one piece of equipment. However, 
You don't need a specific belt or vest to make this type of support because the adapter I made is completely self-contained and universal, which is why I really need to show you a brilliant alternative, the cheapest, but in some ways the best option. Still RTS. Originally designed for work in the garden, but after a few easy modifications, it can be made into a super professional support system. What's more, if you do not have the options to modify it in general, the vest itself can also be used as a very simple support system, because it is basically such a thing, but for the garden equipment. Ok, so what do we need? 30mm aluminum or carbon tubes, 20mm carbon tube, threaded rod, 32mm pulleys, keep cross connector and clamps, global truss and show decked clamps, steel ring, fitness resistant bands, a couple of screw and washers. The first step is the supporting frame for the wall vest. We make it from 30mm tube. You can choose aluminum or carbon. I use aluminum tubes because they are much cheaper. Just paint them black later and they look super professional. To connect them together, we need keep connectors. Setup is very easy. On one side, you put the tube, which will be the base for the arms holding the gimbal, and on the bottom, we put another tube, which will be the point of connection to some sort of power bungees. Now it's time for the only and basically the most complicated part, the adjustable arm mounts. We need this so that each of the arms can move in any direction individually. For this we need two 30mm tubes, 32mm pulleys, small and large clamps and a threaded rod a little longer than the top tube. First of all, fix the washer on the thread, we need this to keep the distance inside the tube. Insert the rod into the tube, block it with the washers and put pulleys on each end. Block the ends with a nut and that's it. Next, twist two clamps together, but not too tightly so that they have a bit of space on the connection. Then, just put them on the pulley. For the basic arms, you need only two pieces of 20mm tube. Here I recommend carbon because they are light and extremely strong. Put them on the clamp and they are basically ready to use. But if you want a more professional version, you can make a telescopic arms. For this, you need some extra tubes and a keep adapter which allows you to connect two tubes of different size. Of course then, you need to replace 20mm clamps on the mounting points with bigger ones. Here you have really many options. You can use springs or any kind of elastic rope, but the best and probably the most durable solution would be fitness resistant bands. I found some awesome road fitness bands, the equivalent of 12 and 7 kilos. They are the same size, so you can use them together for better result. You can also put them in a special protective cover designed for ropes to protect them from accidental damage. Besides, thanks to this, they look very professional. Links to all types of connectors and clamps you will find in the description below. The great thing is that all keep connectors originally designed for 30mm tubes also work with 20mm ones. All you need is a tiny adapter. So, to put it all together, I mount the arms to the adapter, then I put steel rings on the keep clamps and put them on both ends of the arms. I mount another clamp with steel rings on the bottom tube and put resistant bands between. That's it, super simple. Here are my three options. You can put a conch frog, which is ready to use a great quality directional connector. The second option is a homemade piece of strap with a connector. But by far the best option is a piece of elastic rope, because it will also work as an absorber of vibrations, which are great in dynamic situation. Basically, it's also some sort of fitness strap. Now, when it comes to connecting to the gimbal, you can use clamps and in the case of the tilt ring grip, you can screw the steel rings directly to the handle. To mount the entire adapter to the vest or belt, in both cases we use Showtech or Keep clamps. In the case of tilt float belt, we attach it to the base plate. You can also mount the back support and the harness with another clamp and in the second situation directly to the steel vest. Super simple. Everything's ready, let's check it out. 
because basically all of the elements can be easily adjusted, we have a wonderful possibility to set the tension. We can do it in three ways. Move the wall arms, extend or reduce the length of the arm, and the easiest and most effective way to adjust the resistance is by changing the position of the lower tube so that the vest can handle a weight between 5 and 15 kg and even more. What is absolutely brilliant is that the bands I use are not only super strong and durable, but also very flexible, so that if you adjust them correctly, the wall support system works not only as a weight support, but also can absorb steps and unnecessary movement, which is especially useful in dynamic scenes. Running, long shots, live events, now you can do it without getting tired. And you never have to worry that your arms are exhausted and you can't hold the camera anymore. Which is also great, this kind of setup is excellent if you combine it with some kind of vehicle like a Segway. Because then you have your hands free, so you feel more secure and comfortable. It allows you to get really great shots and a very wide range of movements, especially in fast shots, but even in a tight space. And at this point I would like to answer the question. Should I choose an advanced rig grip with such a support system or maybe Steadicam style support like Tilta Float? Basically, both systems solve the same two oldest and major gimbal problems, which is weight and visible steps. So for most of my project, I will choose Steadicam style because in my opinion it is more versatile. However, it is much more difficult to use, it takes some practice in balancing and some training in how to use it, but the results you can get are absolutely fantastic. On the other hand, a ring grip with a support system for sure is much easier and much faster to use because you don't actually have to balance anything, even after changing the lens, except the gimbal of course. You just put it on and you're ready to shoot. You don't even need a tripod to put the camera away because the grip itself actually is some sort of tripod. So, for all of you who works on projects where you have to be ready quickly and you don't have a lot of time to prepare, for example weddings, documentary style or live events, I highly recommend the advanced ring grip with this kind of support system. However, for all of you who have more time on set and you want to get incredibly possibilities of using a gimbal, I suggest a Steadicam style support system. But if you have many different types of projects like me, it is definitely good to have such a two-in-one equipment. Who knows, maybe one day this kind of universal support will be available, but for now, I hope I give you a good idea on how to do it.